Hello and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. We are riding in the storm. We've got our holding on Aussie Superstar weekly challenge. We're in the HSV. Which, thankfully, I had previously set up for off-roading. Um, it's got off-road race tyres and uh, it's been fitted out for all-wheel drive. As well as having a supercharger added to it, so that's fun. Um, when I saw that the first thing was to win a road race, I was thinking, ah, oh, I'm going to have to redo my tuning and set it up for road racing again and then saw that no we're racing through a thunderstorm so you know what i'll take the all-wheel drive and the off-road tires and i think it works quite well ah we lost all the bonus unfortunately can't even hear the music over the rain that's how intense this is the off-road race tires do mean that we don't have the greatest of grip for on the road I did increase the uh, tire pressures a little bit to counteract that, but honestly, I think when it's like this, <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> Means if we slide off the road a little bit, uh, we've got the grip. So it's still hot air balloons in the air when it's like storm season. I, I feel that there should be a little bit more changes. Ugh once again braked way too late there should be a few more environmental changes than just an occasional storm or dust storm in the dry season I, I should change the ambiance a little bit more everyone else has probably been sliding into every wall instead of just the ones where I forget to break and we'll finish up in the city where we've got a date with some PR challenges after this. Because there was a little bit of not so obvious synergy between the weekly challenge and some of the others. So it would have been a little bit nicer if I'd been able to finish the race and then just go straight through the speed trap that's at the bottom of the hill here. Because it needs to be a A-class modern muscle, which is what this is. Ugh. And uh, we need to do like 200 and some odd k's an hour through it. But the best way to approach that speed trap is from this direction, which is uh, what the race had us do anyway. So let's see if we can build up a bit more speed. And just come thundering down the hill. Need to be doing something in excess of 200 k's an hour. Yeah, we don't have a sharp turn beforehand this time. 278 and it's gold which means we're done <laughs> perfect on to the next now they really have us going just the wrong way for everything unfortunately because if i'd been able to complete it going this direction it would have worked out quite nicely i could have just kept racing along because down the bottom of the hill here there is a speed zone and that's our next challenge that requires the A800 modern muscle. As it turns out, our next requirement for the weekly challenge is also to get six stars in speed zones, so that's handy. It's just synergy on synergy at the moment. So we don't have probably as much of a run-up as I should have gotten. I'm also going to go bonnet view for the speed zone, because it's just a little bit more precise. This is also where the off-road race tires are probably going to bite us a bit uh, because ideally we would have a road set up through here. The supercharger might help though, but I don't think I'm going to be quick enough to get what we need. Oh, it's, it's gold, so maybe. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Once again, I'm caught out by thinking that it wouldn't be enough, and it is. So I'm not sure how many stars that was. It was probably only two stars. So we're going to need to get three more runs of this to get the six stars that we need for the Holden. How much can we cut the corner? Quite a lot. All right. I did notice with the last week's one that it was letting me cut the corner an awful lot. Yeah, we don't get nearly as much speed on this side, though. 
That might have only been one star, so we might have to do it again. Let's get a bit more of a run-up this time. Hey, you know what? We've got the off-road tires. Let's let's do a run-up from here. Get a good run-up from all the way back there. Nice amount of speed before we have to brake quite a lot for this corner once again. But it does keep our average up a bit higher. And now we're building up speed again. Oop, can we keep it together? Well, it's, you know, it's another star, maybe. <laughs> oh, there we go. Talk victory and complete. So the next part of the weekly challenge, it turns out, is having to stay above 274 k's an hour for 10 seconds. Obviously, the easiest place to do that is going to be on the highway. But first, there is another PR challenge that requires us to hit 273.6, so basically 274, and it's on the other side of this mountain pass. So I'm trying to make sure that I build up ooh, plenty of speed, and that is not how to do that. Once again, this might be where the off-road tires bite us more than they help us. At the very least, I could always pump the pressures up higher. So we've just got to go cleanly through this section here. Accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. There we go. I'm not going to be able to hold this for 10 seconds though, so let's head to the motorway, shall we? So unfortunately, we don't have the uh, coffee shop at the end of the highway anymore <laughs> but anytime you see a requirement for hitting a certain amount of speed for a certain amount of time the one sure place to do that is the big long straight road cutting through the middle of the map funnily enough there is also a daily challenge to get uh, five near misses on the highway so we'll do that at the same time oh there we go holding on complete and with that, we've got the Toyota Camry 2023 unlocked halfway through for the season. And that's because we have done the weekly challenge now and every single daily quest. I did a lot of those beforehand because they're very sporadic and not very interesting, like just purchasing a Jaguar. And now for the 16 remaining points, we're pretty much going to have to clear the board, I think. We need three points from the event lab race, solo only, so that's nice to know. Uh, 10 points from the seasonal championships takes us to 13 and then three from the lunch break smash six business suit tanks near the cross-country circuit in guanajuato i was just there for the speed traps well back we go so here's around where the urban cross-country circuit is and sure enough we've got these business suit pinatas having a little lunch break or a midnight snack at this time in the middle of the plaza. One more. There we go. Lunch break complete. So it's goodbye to the Holden, unfortunately. No more events that we can use that for. It doesn't qualify as a classic rally, funnily enough. <laughs> but we do have the Alpine that we tuned up on a previous time. This isn't very rally though, it must be said. Uh, this is concrete. <laughs> but okay, we've got something with off-road tires, doesn't really need them. Uh, it is all-wheel drive as well. And it is a nice car to drive at least. Uh, I feel like I get what they've been trying to do, make it like a English countryside-esque sort of track. Ah, harking back to Forza Horizon 4 in a way. But, um, I don't know, feels a, a little bit barren and really could have done with an actual dirt road if you're going to call it a rally track. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Ugh. This thing is... I mean, I say this thing is, is sliding into the corners. I'm not breaking enough for these corners is what's going on there. Uh, let's be honest. Let's not blame our tools. It's all very straight lines. I don't know. There's one out of two laps, but the finish line is right up at the end here, and then we've got a very weird gap. I guess we just follow the road because it isn't on the map. Is that why it's a solo only? Because they tried it with AI and they just couldn't join the dots? <laughs> I mean, there's even a checkpoint here. So 
yeah, the map just gets lost. I feel that if your track is doing something like that, you should probably take it as a little bit of a hint that it might need a little bit more work. I also then don't understand how it then gets popular enough to be included in the championship program, like in the festival playlist. I don't know what the qualifications are for that. Maybe they just take it from like most played or recommended or something, but I don't know. It's not to my taste, let's put it that way. I, I appreciate what they've tried to do with the track, but I feel it's a uh, 10 out of 10 for intention, maybe a six in execution. I'm also really not a fan of how you can see there's big gaps on the side where the road isn't flush with the surrounding area. So if you go off, you've got to rewind basically because you can't get back on the road. That's a bit of a problem. Now, where even is the finish line? Yeah, see this bit here, you can see a big gap. Where even is the finish line? <laughs> I assume it's around here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, finish. But the final checkpoint was back further. I don't understand. <laughs> Well, that's apparently the finish. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> On to one of the championships, and we're stepping it up into some sports cars instead of the classic rally, where we have the Honda S2000 that we've tuned up in the past with our surfing Pikachu. I was kind of hoping it would be raining, because then I could have made some joke about like surf and things like that, but never mind. <laughs> I mean, I am glad it's not raining because it's a rear wheel drive <laughs> and very much tuned for road use. So we've just got to avoid the flotsam that's the traffic and slowly make our way to the front of the pack. We do at least have good brakes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, I was trying to push him into the car. Never mind. <laughs> we did get a little bit tangled up with uh, some fallout from some of the AI hitting traffic early on in the race, unfortunately. Which is why we've taken so long to catch up. But hopefully, we're able to cut on some inside lines through here, through the jungle. To be able to get ahead of this guy in front. I can't make out yet what he's in. BMW? Yeah, I think so. We did have a M1 that I was, or a 1M Coupe, I think, that I was tempted to use. But I don't think it's been tuned up. Didn't have a paint job. Usually I'll give my cars a paint job if I've tuned them up in some way. Makes it easier to tell from the car list whether or not something has been tweaked. I keep thinking that I'll be close to the finish line, but this is actually quite a long street race, turns out. The street races do tend to be a little bit on the longer side than just like the road sprints. Been braking a little bit conservatively, so we've got the pack catching up with me again. Maybe we can spook some of the traffic and they'll go into inconvenient positions for our opponents. We can hope. <laughs> I've just got this one last sharp bend at the end here that we are going to again over break hideously for but run reasonably wide on. We managed to slide our way in front of our opponents and across the line. Race number two. And we go back through the roundabout that we just came from, pretty much. The other difference, of course, with street races compared to road races is that they're all done at night. Which, yeah, sure, thematic and everything, but you really don't get to see as much. Makes it a bit less of a spectator experience and also kind of annoying from a player experience because the headlights aren't the greatest and I don't have the option of high beams that I'm aware of.
that's one way to go through a corner. <laughs> Concentrating on trying not to hit the AI, but they were just in a place where, no, there was no getting around that impact pretty much. But thankfully kind of bounced the right direction <laughs> to go through the corner anyway. So you know what, I'll take it. Certainly not the greatest. If we had damage on, we'd be totaled. But we don't, so we're not, so on with the race. Not sure what the guy behind us is. Maybe that's the BMW again. They have been catching up right on our tail again. I mean, I'm not too surprised. I've not been racing brilliantly, but they do have a habit of just, yeah, being right there all the time. Might be a case of paying attention to what they've been racing in, because that could be a good thing to tune up for next time we have a modern sports car race. Because there's no guarantee, even after you do your tuning, that the car that you choose, even though you might min-max it as much as you can with that vehicle to get to like B700 rating in this case, it might just be naturally worse than another car of the same rating because they might have a better engine, for example, that doesn't require tuning that you're not able to do without exceeding the capability. That's also where downloading some of the custom tunes that other people have shared comes into it, because, I mean, I'm not very good at tuning the cars. <laughs> Let's be honest. I do my best. I like to do it myself. I understand some of what the numbers mean, <laughs> but sometimes what looks good on paper doesn't actually work very well, and it's better to just leave it to someone who's played this game a lot more. <laughs> well, whether or not it's the right car or the right tuning, we have been making it work, and we've been winning our races. So, I'm too stubborn to try and swap out to something else now anyway. So it's interesting that you kind of start all on the bridge. I feel you should start in the tunnel on the other side of the bridge. But then we have the descent down into the jungle. Funny that. Track is literally called Jungle Descent. And once again, try to avoid the traffic. I mean, much as I don't like the traffic aspect of the street races, I do think it's a little bit of a tired concept from Need for Speed style games. And doesn't really fit the narrative of the Horizon Festival thing that they're doing. It does add a little bit of exhilaration to the race, I will admit. <laughs> yeah, when you come around a corner and manage to quickly dodge out of the way of someone who's right there. A lot of the time accidentally you just come around, don't even see them, but you manage to just slide past. Maybe you just quickly react. There's a certain adrenaline rush there. But there's also the annoyance when they're right in the part of the corner that you do want to drive through and they just completely mess up your apex. Not that I'm necessarily good enough to be hitting the apexes all the time anyway, but sometimes it's just not even an option when there's a car there. Yeah, I thought I took that corner pretty well, all things considered. In fact, I was going through it a bit too fast and had to take a little bit of a slow acceleration out. And once again, that guy is right behind me. But we're almost there. Last couple of corners and from one bridge to a much smaller bridge. <laughs> and from street racing back to road racing and stepping it up a notch to A-class cars again, we've got Super Saloons, which I was kind of surprised that I couldn't use the Holden for. 
But because it's considered a modern muscle, it's also not considered a super saloon, even though it's literally saloon car racing that they do with Fords and Holdens down this part of the world. So, I don't know. It seems cars aren't allowed to be in multiple categories, which I think is a little bit short-sighted. So instead we've pulled out the Alfa Romeo. Which I think this is one of the Forza editions. I can't remember what its skill boost is around. Might be clean racing skills or something, so yeah, we'll do our best. <laughs> it is tuned up more for road racing. Though we're not screaming ahead or anything, so I don't know how well it's tuned. It is only 799. I've had this car for a very long time. I think it's one of the earlier ones that I did tune up for use in races, so it's entirely possible that I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> I should probably revisit some of these at some point. But that's fine, we've got another one and a half laps to be able to catch up, and the chicane area on the other side, and even this bit here, to be honest, is a prime place for catching up with the AI. They seem to break very sharply for a lot of these corners, even though many of them you can kind of dive through as if it was just a straightaway. Of course he was going to be right there, and then... Uh, then they push across the line. It's really annoying. That's going to come back and bite me, I think, because they're now way ahead again. I could rewind it, but it's fine. Since they'll try and dive in on your inside, and then you try and turn across, and it just pivots them across the racing line. And that was a miserable corner. Alright, so through here, I need to not get blocked. Oh, kind of uh, snuck through. Now it's just one guy. Hopefully, we can catch up through that later section that we were trying to last time. See, he looks almost like he's in a hot hatch or something. What even is that? That's like a Volvo or something. I don't understand what their definition of super saloon is, but whatever. One of the cars was a coupe. I saw that much. Never mind. Race number two, and it's a sprint to the mountain. And lines up quite nicely, it seems, with the third race, which is the hill climb. I've done a good job with this one. I've always been saying how I like when championships have three races that link together, at least approximately. Obviously with circuit races, you can't really link from that to another race, being a circle. Though you could always do a uh, circuit always as the final. So you start off with a couple of sprints that works your way towards where the, the circuit racing is. But either way, it's fine. So that, no, we were racing around the stadium and that's just up there. I meant to check the tuning, never did. Never mind. So I wonder whether or not the transmission on this either hasn't been changed or hasn't been tuned. And then you find you just have to break in order to not crash into the AI, and sometimes you feel that, you know, maybe I should have just shunted them into the wall. <laughs> this is a really short race, we're almost at the end now, that's annoying. Oh well, uh, this might be the one that we have to take a lower place on. Did that count as going through the checkpoint? It did! Excellent! Somehow, that blatant cutting of the corner my rear wheel must have just grazed it. I'll take that. <laughs> and there we are. Next race is just here. Yeah, Saloon Go Vroom. Vulcan Sprint. I wonder if they could have had the finish line of the last one be this side of the bridge instead. So that way I wouldn't have had to drive backwards. But, yeah, It's whatever. Ugh. This, uh... Not very good series of first corners there. 
once again, I didn't check the tuning. Because the, the next race was right there, I didn't even think to check what it had in terms of transmission, and I didn't even click through into the tuning option before the race, because I was too impatient to get started. Oh well. Once again, it's a case of I have been able to at least win. No thanks to people like that getting in my way. <laughs> It's a case of, could it have been easier to win more quickly, <laughs> or without as much effort on my part? Probably, but, you know. I'm here for a good time, not necessarily an easy time. There we go, managed to take a couple of them on that corner. So we do seem to have... Decent acceleration. It is only rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive, which might have been useful, especially for this being a pretty steep hill and the chance to run off into the side of the road more often. But we can still cut the corners a little bit here and there. Otherwise, for highly skilled drivers, they're certainly staying well ahead. <laughs> they don't seem to be making the same amount of mistakes that I normally see from drivers of this difficulty setting. Well, we're in third, which is enough to win the championship. But we'll keep trying to hunt down these remaining two drivers. This section through here tends to be one where, once again, they may break a little bit more than you need to for some of these corner sections, so it allows you to catch up a little bit just by being able to cut the corners a little bit more than what they want to do. But then you've got the sharp right hand bend back there, and then the hairpin here before the sprint to the finish. Now, have we gotten a good route through there, kind of. Can we get on the inside through here? Not really. They're not really slowing down very much. I mean, they don't really have to, to be fair. Nope. Tucked in behind, we'll just have to settle with third on that one. But third in the race, still first in the championship by two points. <laughs> And with that, we're not only at the 40 points for the season, which gives us the Lexus, we're also halfway through the series. 88 points out of the 288 we need gets us a BMW M2. And then next season looks to be hot hatch season with Ford Fiesta and a Renault Clio up for grabs. Got an own and drive BMW X5 so SUV. And once again, only two seasonal championships instead of three, so we're going to have to pick up some more points elsewhere. We've got a treasure hunt though, as well as photo challenge. There's always the horizon open if I really need to resort to multiplayer. Or there is the trial, which we do tend to have a little bit more luck with in Horizon 5 than we have done in 4. But that will do it for now from this season. Thank you very much for watching, we'll see you next time.